So welcome everybody to our panel titled The Creation of a Bisexual Community, How and Why. Uh, I would like to first introduce our guest speaker who came all the way from the UK, Verity Ricci on my left here. Um, she is an LGBT feminist and activist uh, from the UK with almost 10 years experience in the field of bisexual activism. During her stay in the US, she led a bi-weekly meetup group called Bi to Bi, which is the first of its kind uh, at her University of North Texas. She led and managed the group for four years, um, but the, the group is actually still active now after she left, which is amazing. Um, she also collaborated with Bionet USA, which is America's biggest bisexual organization. Uh, she has been working on a video blog uh, about bisexuality, uh, trans issues, and the representation of LGBT ident identities in pop culture. She is work currently working on her documentary series, Bisexual Banter, which is on YouTube. Please look it up. It's fantastic. It is so smart and witty and informative and hilarious. Um, uh, which was actually crowdfunded on Kickstarter, uh, which is a big win, I think, for, for us all. Um, and it's focused on representing the diverse experiences of bisexuality. Uh, and on my right here uh, is Ada Tornosa, who is a feminist also, and an LGBT activist as well. Uh, she co-founded the NGO Club here in Slovenia, uh, which is focused on making bisexual, transsexual, asexual, and queer identities more connected and visible in Slovenia. Uh, she is the sole or organizer of Slovenia's very own bisexual meetup group, which is also the first of its kind in this country. Um, mm, 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 and she is currently working on Ljubljana's Pride Parade and organizing um, of bisexual meetups all over the country for Pride Month. Yes? Yes, yes. Um, there is a, a third guest that uh, was meant to be with us today, um, Radia Hura, who is sadly not here because of a death in the family. So uh, we can give out our condolences to her and uh, continue the panel in this way. Um, so my name is, is Hannah Sinpetri, I have a bit of uh, LGBT activism background myself. When I was 15 years old, I made the first Gay Straight Alliance in Slovenia in a high school, and I was part of a project uh, to <clears throat> kind of spread <laughs> this idea of the Gay Straight Alliance to uh, different high schools, because I believe that any kind of issues, any kind of homophobia, any kind of stereotypes, everything stems from education. So I think high school is a really important place to talk about those issues. Um, but I am the, the moderator today, but I wanted to kind of uh, speak about myself so that in the Q&A portion, if you have any questions for me, you can also address me personally. Um, so now let us get started, if that's okay, with the first question. And this is for both of you. Um, and i just like to ask, and maybe I can start with you, Verity, what does bisexuality as a term mean to you? Um, I... It has a lot of definitions, and I, I, th I guess I ascribe to um, the, the popular Robin Oaks definition um, that I, I have the capacity to be attracted to more than one gender, um, maybe to a different capacity, maybe at different times in my life, but um, it's pretty broad and vague, and that's the way I like it. Um, and. And also as an umbrella term, and not a lot of people like it. A lot of people prefer other other words like pansexual. Um, but the um, my preference for the word bisexual is that there is a history of community going back decades, and um, it's it's the most easily recognisable term that we have. So um, yes. How does it differ for you though from other non uh, LG? Um, like pansexual and multisexual yeah. and that sort of stuff. And yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Um, well, queer is even vaguer, mm -hmm. which is which is a reason to love it, definitely. <laughs> um, but bisexual, it makes it's also making a point of of being separate from lesbian and gay, yeah. um, which I think is necessary mainly in the fact that we've kind of been kicked out of lesbian and gay to begin with. Like, um, you know, 60 years ago, if you if you 
dated both men and women, you would probably be labelled as gay, colloquially. Um, but in contemporary LGBT activism, or gay rights activism, um, people are very strict about who is allowed into gay and lesbian. Um, and because of that, we have had to form a distinct community for ourselves. So I think it's important in that respect of getting any recognition at all, mm -hmm. um, rather than having been made, since it's been made invisible by the lesbian gay community. I totally agree. Ada, what is my social identity to you? Um, so I identify as a yeah, I basically, I like the definition of having the capacity of being attracted to people of different genders. I think one of the things that people often say about bisexuality these days, now that, you know, non-binary gender identities are gaining more visibility, is that, oh, but, you know, it isn't something that has bi, like the word to in the word itself, isn't that binary, isn't that erasing non-binary identities? And I think what's really important to keep in mind here is that the bi community didn't invent the word bisexuality. Like the same as with the word homosexuality, it was ascribed to us by the medical community, by psychiatry, and we it was first used for you know plants and for what we call intersex now. So we kind of reclaim that term, and I think that's very powerful. So that's why I still like the word bisexuality, even though some people think it has binary implications. And there are definitions of bisexuality, like being attracted to two or more genders, or, be, or being attracted to genders similar to your own and different to your own. So there are ways of working out like two different groups of gender into the word bisexuality without it implying just binary men and women genders. So, yeah, that's what I like it, but I think as a community, sometimes bisexuality is used as an umbrella term, and it also encompasses um, people who are pansexual, who are queer, or who maybe don't use any labels, um, and I think it's important to recognize that. But you think that's a great thing? I I think it's good to have a variety of labels for people to choose from or to not choose any at all. So, you know, as long as people are comfortable. Thank you, that's a very beautiful little <laughs> sentiment. Um, so Verity, I wanted to ask you um, if you can maybe speak a little bit about um, your own experiences and tell us why do you think there is a need for creating a bisexual community in addition to the LG community that, that already is very strong and exists? Well, when I, when I first came out as bisexual, when I was a teenager, I, well, I started university and there were, um, there was like a gay and lesbian club on campus and it, and it occasionally used the term LGBT, which is meant to be inclusive, you know, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, but it kind of, it tends to just get it gets used to be like, look, we're inclusive, and then that's as far as anyone goes. But so it's like, it's like, it's kind of a cop out, I think, a lot of the time. Um, so that's that's the kind of attitude that the gay club on my university university campus had, um, and all the other bisexuals I knew, because um, I was in feminist clubs, but also there were other bisexuals. Um, everyone who had been to that that club, including myself, to the gay club, um, had making fun of bisexuality like because that, that's what you do and it's and it's intimidating to speak up in in that kind of kind of environment where it's already supposed to be respectful and inclusive um, and there's there's nothing and um, I also I like having just found a few like a handful of bisexuals myself um, I was excited to share what I knew about bisexuality you know I'd read some books and I I'd watched dozens of movies, I, I, I like scoured the library for every kind of bisexual-ish representation I could find, and I was desperate to share that with people. So, um, so I was like, yeah, let's start our own club, let's do this. That was what the question was about. Yeah, why is there a need for creating a community? <laughs> okay, um, because, yeah, so... You so, felt there was a lack also yeah, in the media, I, you're saying, in the yeah. books and everything. You didn't find a representation of yourself. I found it very difficult to find a representation, and um, 
have already feeling segregated from the LGBT community, um, which again isn't to say that like tra like transness necessarily like I'm also trans and that I don't feel included in the LG very much even when the, the term LGBT is used. Um, but we 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 all felt all the bisexual I know have met also had this sense of um, loneliness and like a need to to talk about themselves and their experiences when people weren't listening because um, mm -hmm. bisexual tends to be seen as um, as gay light like diet gay <laughs> so, <you're> like, <laughs> so it's not that big of a deal because it's only been, it's only like half gay um, semi gay so um, and that's not actually people's experiences at all. And, and bisexual people have for forever um, been experiencing a variety of struggles that have been uh, made invisible uh, because, because of issues like um, statistics will include bisexuals in the straight or the gay category and won't make a bisexual category. So naturally, you don't, you don't see a distinction, uh, you don't see whether or not bisexuals do get statistically half the oppression, um, but in the last several years studies have been coming out with, um, with results showing that bisexuals statistically have much higher rates um, of domestic abuse and um, drug, drug abuse and, and alcohol abuse. Um, of other problems. So, yeah. feeling, I mean, and on some level, I guess bisexuals tend to not know that, mm -hmm. but they're going through their struggles while being told that their struggles don't exist yeah. or are unrelated to their sexual orientation. Yeah. And um, so, so, number one, I think. The, like initially we just need a space to exist and feel validated and be able to talk about our experiences. Mm -hmm. I also agree that like every minority deserves a voice and deserves a safe space, even if we're speaking about minorities within minorities, which I think is even harder. Um, so, but I'd like to go back to what you were saying about this idea of loneliness, of, of not finding a representation of yourself in, in the media or not finding a way to and people to relate to. So, and I wanted to ask you: Did you feel like loneliness, or maybe even anger, was one of the reasons why you were interested in, in pursuing this and in creating a, a community yourself? Yes. Um, I think one of the reasons I would like to continue from what you said about mm -hmm. people seeing my sexual appearance as like gay, like, um, is the problem where bisexuality is seen like a combination of homosexuality and heterosexuality and first of all I think it's really difficult if you're made to feel like you're not a full human your identity is not like a whole thing it's a pastiche of like remains of other identities and I think living as a bisexual or a pansexual or a queer person whatever kind of feels that way because you you feel alienated living your life, I guess, straight, or hanging out with straight people, hanging out with straight world, <laughs> I can't even say spaces. Um, you know you don't belong there because you are not straight, but you don't always belong in the gay and lesbian spaces either. So I think that's one of the reasons it's important to create by spaces, so at least somewhere you feel validated and you feel like you don't have to maybe minimize a part of your identity in order to fit in wherever you are, um, and also to just feel like you're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you said that a lot of people feel like their struggles aren't valid is a lot of people in the Slovenian by media group have told me that they didn't even feel like they deserve to think about bisexuality as an issue because I think the way people see 
that considering you're half gay and half straight, when you're only your gay half is oppressed. So, you know, the gay and lesbian activism covers that, and that's all we need. But I think the reason why we need, in addition to gay and lesbian activism, which is already doing a lot of important work that does help bisexual as well, is that if we don't talk about bisexuality, we don't even know what our separate struggle, struggles are. And research shows that, for example, 75% of bisexual women are victims of sexual violence. That's, that's a lot. 75% is like almost everyone. And most of this violence is perpetrated by men. So even when we are in what people perceive as accepted relationship of a man and a woman, so you know what is seen as a straight relationship, we have our own struggles. And I think that comes from the hypersexualized image of bisexuality, where people are like, yeah, bisexual women are only you know claiming they're bisexual to get attention. Um, they're, they're saying that because you know men will think it's sexy. And if men think you know you're only doing this for attention, it means that basically with your whole existence you're making yourself sexually available to everyone. So that's where you know these high rates of sexual violence and domestic abuse and emotional abuse come from. Um, and it's something that has to be addressed. That we are facing struggles even you know when in situations where people wouldn't expect if they don't see bisexuality as a separate benefit. I wanted to also ask you, you were saying that you felt often pushed out of the LGBT community, that there were events that, that were LGBT, but you felt like that B wasn't, well, both of you were saying that that B isn't um, usually addressed. So I, I just wanted to ask you if there's a reason you think that is, or if there's a reason you think LG is more compatible in the mainstream yeah. media, or okay. yeah. why that's more good. Um, I, I think that, I'm not going to say lesbian and gay people, I'm going to say the concept of being a lesbian or a gay person is seen as more compatible with heteronormativity. So, and that's not to say that there aren't struggles that, for instance, lesbians are having um, that, that are incompatible um, I think that there's, there's plenty of struggles that lesbians are having that are incompatible with heteronormativity. But the way that the gay rights movement has spun it is that it is perfectly compatible with heteronormativity. And all that gay people want is just to get married and have kids and just fit in with the straight people. And we're all perfectly normal, just like straight people. And bisexuality immediately brings in this connotation of um, multiple partners. Like you cut the way that people visualize in, in any kind of art, visualize bisexuality is as more than one more, more than one partner. And traditionally and like even amongst in, in kind of liberal spaces, um, heteronormativity maintains this idea that you're supposed to have one single partner and be in a monogamous traditional relationship that, that that is all about having children and, and living the capitalist lifestyle, the capitalist dream, um, and bisexuality is more visibly incompatible with that. And and that's not I don't I don't think heterosexuality is compatible with that. But like I don't think anything really is. But it's it's much easier to put the spin on, on the gay and lesbian. So. Uh, and and also also with trans people obviously like we we don't we don't fit into it either so it it has been re really, it it has been much easier to leave us behind mm -hmm. um, so and you know we've got, we're getting some visibility now but I think even now um, there is a, a habit of like with bi people to to say just because I'm bisexual doesn't mean I'm a slut. You know, that kind of like shit like that, and like and like trans people, like trans women, just want to like 
settle down, have a husband, be a normal woman kind of thing. And that's what a trans person is, just like a, this binary ideal. Um, so I think we've been, we've been left behind and recent attempts to, to bring us in. I'm not doing very well. I think we need to point out that what we're talking here, what, what we are talking about here is like the mainstream liberal gay and lesbian movement that is also being criticized by, by a lot of gay men and lesbians mm -hmm. for the same reasons that you pointed out because it leaves so many people behind and it's just trying to stop LGBT people in this like heteronormative capitalist like mode of living instead of you know changing the system. Um, but I agree that, you know, because this, like, mainstream gay movement is based on respectability politics, you know, we're just like you. It's not compatible with this stereotype of bisexuality. Like, the, the most common stereotype people have of bisexuality is, you know, hypersexual, cheater, unsure, or, like, will probably like can't make up their minds and how do you fit people who are you know greedy and sluts into the image of having a family and getting married and settling down i think that's a big reason why bisexuality is pushed out of the mainstream movement because we're painting their respectability politics here and do you think phrases like bisexual is out in themselves and going up and saying okay i'm bisexual but I'm not a slut, or I'm bisexual but I'm not uh, polyamorous, or I'm bisexual but I'm not hypersexual, do you think that perpetuates that? I, yeah, I think so. The community I would like to create is a community that is accepting of everyone, because I think if we are going out there and saying, well, you should accept us because we are not sluts, and <laughs> we, are, uh, we just want to get married and have you know, one and a half kids and a dog. <laughs> that doesn't really help anyone in the long run. Like, it might make a portion of population, and that goes the same for gay and lesbian, gay men and lesbians, that, you know, it might make some people more accepting in the short term, but I think in the long term it's harming the community because, first of all, there, there are a lot of bisexuals who are promiscuous, and there are bisexuals who are you know, polyamorous, and there are bisexuals who are questioning that their identity. And I think what we should be attacking instead of, you know, trying to fit ourselves into this respectable image of bisexuals is questioning why do people think it's bad to be promiscuous? Why do people think everyone has to be monogamous? We need to question, you know, the underlying assumptions that people think are bad instead of trying to make ourselves, like, nice enough. Yeah. I think, um, you know, heteronormativity is about creating gender and sexual hierarchies. And to me, being, being radical about your queer politics is about destroying hierarchies. So there's, you, like, so I'm not saying that we can't be or that monogamous people are inferior in any way. I'm, I'm saying break down the hierarchies, period. There should be no, but I'm not this. It should be, everything is valid, everyone's wonderful. Let's be like, if he's not next to <laughs> That's a beautiful, beautiful sentiment as well. Um, before we move on to the next portion, I just wanted to ask both of you, do you feel that... Um, that men and women who identify as uh, bisexual are equally exposed or uh, participate equally within the dialogue? No. no. I think, I think women, women are represented more often and more out and talk about it more. Um, obviously there's no men on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think that might be part, part of that is that women are already involved in um, feminist activism which is already like so women tend to be involved in lesbian activism and 
feminism more often, mm -hmm. and those like intersect more, whereas like gay men's activism doesn't, doesn't necessarily. <coughs> I think I don't. I don't think bisexual men have the kind of community that is encouraging <coughs> like that kind of non-conforming behaviour. Um, I don't know if that's, I mean, I don't think that's necessarily entirely it, but... <coughs> yeah, it's hard to pinpoint the reason, but but I also feel like I see more more women. I feel like I see, I know more bi women than men. I, I see more bi women online, <coughs> or, or writing about it, or talking about it. Um, do, you, do you feel that way as well, especially also yeah, here in, in yeah, Slovenia? Yeah, yeah. I, when I organized the first bi meeting in Ljubljana, mm -hmm. I was actually extremely happy that men showed up at all. <laughs> Um, and I think a big part of that is actually misogyny because people do not take women's attraction to women seriously so I mean that's where the stereotype comes from right because people think that bisexual women are actually straight and we are just pretending to be white for attention and bisexual men are actually gay and they just you know didn't have the courage to fully come out yet and like bisexual non-binary people don't even exist. And, but the point of that is that only our attraction to men is seen as valid. You know, we, both with bisexual men and bisexual women. So if you're a, bis a bisexual woman, people don't even take you seriously. Whereas with bi men, as soon, or just men in general, as soon as you like experience or express any kind of at attraction to men, you are tainted by like mm -hmm. gayness or queerness or whatever. Yeah. So I think maybe that's why men find it harder to come out as bisexual. Yeah. I mean personally I think that's a big part uh, a big uh, part of that is, is the porn industry is the fact that there there are so so much like propaganda for, for women hooking up with each other and experimenting and so on. Whereas that really isn't isn't the case for men. Um, I remember when I was like I was like sixteen years old and I outed myself as a bi bisexual to my cousin who had just spent like but like 10 minutes talking about, he saw some like guys kissing on the bus and he was like really upset about it. And he spoke to me and I was like, actually, I'm bi. He was like, oh, no, that's fine. That's hot. That's, that's cool. Like, it's not a problem. You know, this kind of idea that yeah. it's not real or, or it's not an issue. Yeah, exactly. Or you're only doing it to atten for attention or yeah. whatever. They're not taking our attraction to women seriously. That's excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great. Thank you so much. Um, now I want to talk to you guys about um, more about your personal experiences. Now that we've kind of outlined the problems, obviously we have a lot of problems. <laughs> it's, this is, this is going to be a hard project, but now I'd like to take a moment and positively talk about how do you actually create this community that we're talking about? What are the issues to, that you face and how do you overcome them? So Verity, if you're ready, I'd like to start with you. And ask, so what is your experience in creating a bisexual community within your university in Texas? My yeah, what what inspired you? Let's start with that. Um, sorry, I'll use stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay. What inspired you to, yeah. to create the uh, like a beautiful and touching inspiration that made Ooh. me start my meeting in Slovenia was actually the marriage equality referendum <laughs> because. I, I don't know, I've been thinking about the fact that there isn't much of why anything going on for a while, but I think the seeing the right thing in like discourse around this referendum just was the last step. Um, because, I don't know if you already mentioned that, but most bisexual people don't actually come out. I think only yeah. like less than 30% of bi people come out to the most important people in their life, which means most bisexual people never come out. So we're an incredibly invisible population, like not only in media, but in our personal lives. And so a big part of why I want meetings, and we have a lot of people coming regularly, like every meeting is usually attended by almost 30 people, yeah. and I think that's that's a lot. That's, that's more amazing. than yeah. That's more than I ever expected. And those are people who I 
never met at the, at the LGBT scene before, and I'm, I'm pretty active in the community. <laughs> so I think this does show that there are so many more LGBT people out there who just aren't participating in the community. And I think the community is missing out. Um, so, yeah. yeah, you wanted to give people a, a safe space and, and somewhere to go. I think a big issue that we're starting to talk about here is this idea of visibility. Verity, if you have experience, any experience with that, you know, how to kind of out yourself without outing people, you know, accidentally, yeah. without making anyone uncomfortable, but how to kind of out that, hey, something is happening, please come if you want, no pressure, but like, you know, there is a space for you. How do you go about doing that? Yeah. Um, well, for one thing, you've got to, you've got to avoid making a space exclusively bisexual if you don't want to out people. Because people, people need to feel like they can come even if they identify as straight or lesbian or something. Like they, everyone needs to feel like they they can come if they if they're curious or interested in some way, um, and and not feel threatened and not feel like they're going to be out. Because being out it is is well, you shouldn't be out it by anyone else, and it can be really frightening. Like no matter what your sexual orientation is, I've had friends who you know start start off as. I had one friend, she started off as a lesbian, and then she, after after like eight years, she met a guy and then decided she was straight, and then all of her lesbian friends left her. And she, so she lost all of her community, all of her friendships, and then being after being straight for a few years, she was like, okay, no, that doesn't work. And so she decided to come out as bisexual, and then all her straight friends left her. And it's not funny, that's why I'm laughing. Um, like it's awful. Like you can't you can't build a, it's a safe community for yourself when you you don't know if everyone you care about is just going to suddenly leave you. Mm -hmm. um, what was the question? Yeah, no, you answered it. You did. Ada, do you agree with that? Do you agree that you can't make a community solely bisexual in order for it to be safe? We discussed that at the first meeting, yeah. and we agreed, yeah, that we are going to make the meetings open for everyone as long as people are respectful. And I do want to keep the community where a majority of people are bi and pan and queer and you know, whatever. But I think it's good to make it open because first of all, it lets people come even if they're unsure of their, their identity or if they don't want to come out yet. And we also had, I don't know, partners of people. So my, I don't know, either gay or straight partners of bisexual people yeah. come with them to the meetings. And I think that's, that's beautiful. Awesome, yeah. yeah, and we had our, I don't know, gay and lesbian friends come mm -hmm. out of support and curiosity and mm -hmm. because they want to learn more. And so I think it's good to leave the, you know, the community open forever. Can you share any tips for how you physically did that? Like maybe you you made a group that was open and then you closed it or, or any like really practical ways um, for, for all of us activists here to start our own? I actually was really unsure of how to go around yeah. in creating that because, well, it's the first time anyone, you know, tried creating this kind of thing here. And <clears throat> as you said, um, privacy is a big issue. Yeah. And I think a lot of people who come to meetings aren't out yet or aren't out to everyone. So we have to keep that in mind. And we mostly publicize the meetings on Facebook. Yeah. Um, and we create Facebook events, even though not a lot of people like attend them on Facebook. A lot, a lot more people come just because Facebook is so rubbish with privacy. Yeah. But it's still a good way to reach people. And we also have a group on Facebook which is secret. So we can like have a community online and keep the conversation going there while people you know feel like their privacy is being protected but I think the biggest issue that I have and it's we really haven't addressed that today is how to address the bisexuals that mostly hang out with straight people yeah because yeah. I don't we keep talking about yeah bisexuals in the gay and lesbian community and I just want to point out that, you know, even though there are issues with how a part of gay and lesbian community treats bisexuality, this is not our biggest enemy. Like, all of that is just a rebound of heteronormativity and of, you know, 
straight people's biphobia. So I think my biggest problem in creating this community is how to reach people who are not already to some degree involved in the LGBT community because that's my background. Like, Quartier uh, is an LGBT organization and we have a lot of other Slovenian LGBT, I don't know, organizations, spaces, sharing our events and yeah. helping us promote this thing. Yeah. But this way we are only reaching people who are already involved in the community. So I think the, it helps the people themselves are spreading the word. Absolutely. And I see a lot of people bringing their friends. Yeah. But I don't actually know how to, you know, publicize this in a broader way. I know this isn't about me, but if I may just offer this, I think again that comes back to education. I think that's something we need to actually be doing much earlier. Do you think you could uh, help solve this problem? Do you have any advice for her? Well, <laughs> what well, I mean, it, it was different for us because we were on university campus when we, yeah. when we started our organization. Um, but, well, sometimes it's hard to figure out what to do in a buy meetup group because it depends very much on, on who's coming and what everyone wants to do. Um, but one of the things that we decided would be best that we could all get involved in was just mm -hmm. making posters. And we would just like, everyone would participate in just try to make a new poster and we'd make a bunch of posters and we would just plaster them all around the campus. Um, and the point of that was to just be as obnoxiously visible as, as we could be. Well, was it without being too obnoxious, <laughs> but actually running up to people and yelling at them. Because <laughs> um, we weren't allowed to do that. Just go in here, just go in this room. So, so that was a huge thing. And then we had like, we had, we got Robin Oakes to come, who is a famous American um, bisexual activist slash author. And she, we got her to come do a big presentation on bisexuality. And so the university publicized it as well. Um, and just, we just tried to have the word bisexual plastered everywhere um, so that everyone was seeing it and whether or not I think part of it was to make bisexuals come, but also you kind of know that not everyone who's interested is going to come. Only a minority of people who are interested in, in a certain organization or whatever are going to actually be able to attend or want to attend. Um, but I just like to imagine that some like like positive bisexual per person would be wandering around campus and see one of our posters and be like, they organize. Oh my god, like, this is totally valid. They even have a poster. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real identity. Um, so, I mean, if I could do that for just, like, a few people, that was, that, that made it feel worthwhile. But um, also they got more people coming. Mm -hmm. um, and, and kept the organization going, but yes, I'll try I agree with the disability thing. At the beginning, I was really unsure whether I should make the meetings more private or more visible because I think there are some LGBT events in Slovenia that are based on privacy and that are not widely publicized and maybe that's also because they are intended for younger people or something like that for example um, the Gibitrini Tavori which never you know announce their I don't know where they're taking place um, and on one hand I think making events more private would make more closet the people comfortable coming but and I actually asked you for advice about that and you said you should make it more visible mm -hmm. and I think that's actually more inspiring for people so even if they don't want to come because they are not ready or they don't want to come out or you know they don't feel comfortable I think it's more inspiring for a closeted person to see that we are out there and we are not hiding ourselves than to perpetuate the circle of you know privacy and secrecy by keeping the meetings secret. So, so would you say that was your goal to kind of to to be visible and, and to empower people to feel like there is a safe space when you created this? Yes, I think mostly. Well, first of all, I wanted to create a space where people could come and see that they are not alone and discuss their problems and just have a space where we don't have to defend or explain or, you know, minimize.
seminars or event visits for a bit. And I think the response that we have and the discussions that spark up at every meeting and that have been extremely lively so far show that there is actually a need to talk about it. People just felt like either they weren't given the opportunity to do it or felt like they didn't even deserve to discuss this stuff. Yeah. So I think if you give people, and I'm not saying like I'm the savior of my sexual community, because for me, she kind of is. <laughs> no, I mean, when I organized the first meeting and 30 people show up, I was just as impressed as anyone else, because I've never yeah. even seen so many bi and pan and queer people in one space. It was like, wow. It was just like, it was just a room of 30 people just walking, looking around like, what? You too, what? It's great. Like, wow, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So great. I think if you give people that, then we all feel more comfortable being openly bisexual in the rest of our lives yeah. and coming out you know, having a support system. So, I also, you know, think it's important to do stuff like this where we are addressing the wider public. Yeah. Um, but if you give people a space where they feel safe, they will also continue their, you know, micro-activism in everyday lives, which is just as important or even more important. Absolutely. So, very. what about you? What would you say was your main goal um, with creating by the by? Um, I think probably just to be less lonely and feel validated. I think it's, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I think that we are in privileged positions to be able to like, yeah. like, I was able to come out when I was 18 and just be like, hey everyone, I'm bisexual, what's up? And it was still like nerve-wracking and I still had all this like internalized like biphobia and like self-loathing naturally when I was 18. And, um, mm -hmm. But, but I was able to come out, which is an advantage that not everyone has. So we, we use our privilege to, <coughs> to make a space for other people. Um, so, yeah, it's not about like being a savior, it's about like using the advantages that you have that other people don't have to, to, like, to give them space and to give them a voice. I totally agree, although I have to say you guys are just like, like pink 